Hello, welcome to part 25 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Here, we are going to discuss day-to-day -day clinical scenarios with detailed explanations. Let's move to question number 121. A stroke physical therapy program aims to achieve normalization of muscle tone to enhance the normal movements. Which of the following therapeutic modality is correctly included in the program as an effective tone producing intervention? Option A. Warm compresses. Option B. Pressure splints. Option C. Stretching of the finger muscle through manual stretching techniques. Option D. Passive manipulation by the therapist. And answer is Option D. Passive manipulation by the therapist. Explanation to this question is Passive manipulation by the therapist is an effective tone producing technique. I see contraction of the muscle antagonist to spastic muscles and weight bearing are the other techniques used to reduce the muscle tone. Pressure splints and the manual stretching of the finger muscles do not cause long term effects. Now let's move to question number 122. Patients with heel spur, heelist tendon contracture, and hind foot malalignment are managed by shoes modification to provide support during the gait to reduce the pain. Which of the following shoe modification is the most likely considered for the patients? Option A. External heel wage. Option B. Internal stuffoid pad. Option C. Internal heel cushion relief. Option D. External heel elevation. And the answer is Option C. Internal heel cushion relief. Explanation to this question is Internal heel cushion relief manages the conditions mentioned. Orthotic interventions for this patient include internal heel modification and internal scaphoid pad is used for medial arch support. Now let's move to question number 123. A patient is sustained a right cerebrovascular accident presents with flaccid left arm. During the muscle testing, the patient is able to strike the left shoulder. The most accurate explanation for the shoulder movement is that the right cerebrovascular accident. Option A has affected the right shoulder and not the left shoulder. Option B did not affect the vagus nerve which innervates the upper trapezius muscle. Option C did not affect the spinal axillary nerve which innervates the upper trapezius muscle. Option D has affected the left biceps and tricep muscle but not deltoid muscles. And the answer is Option C did not affect the spinal axis in the nerve which innervate the upper trapezius muscle. Explanation to this question is A cerebrovascular accident affects the left shoulder, not the right shoulder. The upper trapezius is controlled by the spinal axillary nerve, not the vagus nerve. The spinal axillary nerve was apparently not affected by the stroke and accounts for the patient's ability to shrug a flaccid arm. The deltoid does not shrug the shoulder. Now let's move to question number 124. A client who is participating in weight loss program has been walking 3 days per week for 15 minutes for the past 3 weeks. To progress the exercise program, which of the following modification is most likely accomplished the weight loss goal? Option A. Maintain the current walking speed and increase the duration to 30 minutes. Option B. Increase the walking speed and keep the duration at 15 minutes. Option C. Walk 4 days per week and decrease the duration to 10 minutes. Option D. Change from walking 3 days per week to jogging 1 day per week for 20 minutes. And the answer is Option A. Maintain the current walking speed and increase the duration to 30 minutes. Explanation to this question is The optimal exercise duration for achieving weight loss with a walking program is 40 to 60 minutes of continuous aerobic activity. Therefore, once a patient is safely tolerating 15 minutes, the best progression is to increase the duration while maintaining the same intensity of walking speed. Increasing the walking speed should not only be performed once the patient is consistently tolerating 20 to 30 minutes of exercise. Decreasing the duration while increasing the frequency of the exercise would not accomplish the goal of 40 to 60 minutes of continuous exercise. A patient who has been walking only for 15 minutes 3 times per week would not be ready to begin jogging and the jogging 1 times per week would be too low of an exercise frequency in general to achieve any training benefits. Now let's move to question number 125. A patient who is relearning the task of moving from sit to stand following traumatic brain injury 
is frustrated because of the repeated failure attempts. To facilitate the patient's success, a physical therapy should first option A, permit the patient to rest until the next physical therapy session and re-attempt the activity. Option B, encourage the patient to visualize the success with the task before resuming attempts. Option C, provide incentive by holding a desired object to patient to reach towards. Option D, decrease the challenge of the task so that the patient experiences success. And the answer is Option D. Decrease the challenge of the task so that the patient experiences success. Explanation to this question is, it is the most important for the patient to experience some form of success in order to provide motivation. Stopping the session upon failure may further frustrate the patient. Visualization, although is useful, is a higher level task that should not be first strategy used. Poor body mechanics and stimulation of the tone may occur if the patient reaches forward until the moving from seat to stand. Necessary to learning or motivation to try unknown and simultaneously success in learning to retain the learner's motivation. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. For further learning, keep in touch with the channel. See you in the next part. Bye bye. See you and thank you for watching. Bye bye.